Welcome back to another edition of Grizzly Bites. I'm Scott McDonald. I'm joined by our club director, Jeff Coney. We have a very special topic today, men's basketball scheduling. And Jeff, people don't talk about <laughs> this special. enough. Yeah, yeah. But I, I know I've been in your office. I've, I've heard some of the phone calls. Um, it's not as easy as everyone thinks, especially when you have a team like Oakland University that has proven success. Take me through maybe the first steps of uh, scheduling as far as setting up your non-conference schedule. Well, I think the first step is you have to find out how many games you need to schedule. And so depending on your conference slate in the Horizon League, we have nine teams right now. And so it's a double run robin for 16 games. And so for NCAA rules, you're allowed to play 27 plus an exempt tournament plus a conference tournament. So in our purposes, it's 11 plus an exempt tournament. And then what does that 11 look like? And so philosophically, you, I think you have to do an honest analysis of where your team is projected to be for the next year. And uh, certainly, you know, the years that you think you may be able to uh, overachieve or have that opportunity to do some really special things, you have to set your schedule up with that in mind. And then some of the years where you may be rebuilding or uh, you have some transition in your roster and so they're more unknowns, then you may want to take that into account when you're scheduling. It's very difficult, though, uh, because the, the one factor that most uh, everybody can say is there's a home court advantage. That proves out objectively in that in non-conference non and conference games, 70 to 80 percent of the home, of, the home of, the, of times the home team wins. And so when you factor that in, I mean, everybody's looking to get home games. Um, and, you know, that's just one of those factors that, you know, is a given and a constant, and there's a preference, obviously, to do that. So, you know, those are kind of the initial thoughts. Um, but, yeah, you can ask uh, yeah, more specific exactly. questions for uh, sure. And you talk a little bit about it is you have to kind of forecast what kind of team you're going to have. But part of that, too, I think that people don't understand is you're not getting um, the lower half BCS teams aren't really willing to play in Oakland. You know, you're getting the top half of the BCS teams that are willing to pay Oakland to come down and play. Talk a little bit about that game that is played with the Power Five conferences. Sure. So there's a lot of different factors that go into what your objectives are with the non-conference scheduling. One is uh, the game guarantees our financial component where you go play X school and in consideration of playing X school, uh, in this case, Oakland University would receive a paycheck and that will help to offset some of the finances within the basketball program and within the department. And so historically, Oakland has uh, went and played these games and you know, what is that right amount of money that quote unquote Oakland needs to bring in to our coffers from playing these game guarantees. A lot of times those are the games that are played against the high majors. The other way that you play a high major uh, is through an exempt tournament. And so the exempt tournament, depending on which one you play, sometimes comes with a financial guarantee the same way that a game guarantee does. Um, and then the third component that we have here uh, is our relationship with Michigan State. And it's, a, it's really a home and home uh, scenario where all home games are played at the Palace through a contractual relationship. And so that's obviously a high major that when we go there, it op operates like a game guarantee game, but when they come here, it operates um, as a pseudo home game for us played in our you know, virtual backyard at the Palace with a bigger facility. So those are kind of the, the ways that they get, uh, and I might say they, the Power Five games get into our schedule and what those ramifications are, but I think you're right. I think one of the objectives that Oakland University has is also prepare our team for the kind of level that they're going to see in postseason play. Uh, I think also, uh, concurrently that, we certainly want to prepare our team through the rigors of the Horizon League. And one of the things that Coach Campy believes very strongly is that a uptick in the type of schedule you play in the non-conference, and if you play these kind of teams that have that talent, you're going to be the beneficiary of those kind of games and going through those wars and, and seeing how you match up and just the learning experience of playing in front of those kind of crowds and in those arenas and that game um, environment and the student experience, student athlete experience that goes around playing those games, you know, can culminate and help us through uh, some of the, the Horizon League games. But I think, you know, stepping back a ways, you know, I think you have to prepare for the Horizon League. You certainly have to prepare for the postseason. Um, and in doing that, I think you have to have a more balanced schedule. Um, and I think, yes, there's a, there's a place for doing that with the high major games, but I think there's also opportunities to play mid-major competition and be very indicative of where the Horizon League is going to be sitting as, you know, one of the top mid-major conferences in basketball. And you, you mentioned the Michigan State game at the Palace next year, and that will be included as part of the season ticket package, won't it? 
Yes, next year we are uh, going to have an, uh, Michigan State at the Palace. We're going to have an Oakland section with a, a preferential ticket. We're going to roll that out as part of our overall season ticket package with the other games being here at the arena. Uh, you know, we're looking at our non-conference slate combined with that Horizon uh, League slate of conference games, and so we're trying to put in an attractive package. But yeah, to sit in that special Oakland section, it's going to come with buying a season ticket. Now, with the TV deal this year and really being out there on so many different platforms, does that come into play for maybe a mid-major team when you reach out to an athletic director and say, hey, if you come to the arena, you're going to get some national exposure? Absolutely. I, I think... Uh, that's part of uh, what separates some opportunities from other opportunities. It's kind of the, uh, you know, you have a, a Ford Focus here and you have a Ford Focus here and you're debating between the two Ford Focuses. You know you want a Ford Focus, but, you know, is this one coming with the satellite and the leather seats that warm on really cold days and the, the steering wheels that I now see can get warm too, which would really come in on days there at negative 21 outside. I don't know why that's a you know, in the forefront of my mind right yeah. now. But uh, in terms of those two Ford Focuses, sure. So can we offer them a great welcoming environment? Yes. Can we maybe even help them with doing laundry, which we did for some of our visitors this year? Sure. Is it going to be exposure, as you talk about, ESPN3, local Detroit? Maybe they have an initiative here in terms of recruiting. They want to expand their brand. We can offer that as, as an opportunity. Uh, all those things that we can put and have as talking points certainly help us. You know, we're sitting right now, I think, as an RPI between, fluctuating between 120 and 140, which is, you know, right at the edge of the top third in the country. Um, there's benefits of being there, but there's also some non-benefits of being there. Uh, you know, some of the schools that are uh, in growth mode, you know, may not want to play a team uh, there uh, where we sit because they're anticipating an L, especially when you factor in the 70, 80 percent of home teams win. Uh, and then by virtue of that, some of the teams that are higher than us may not want to play us because they see, wow, I don't know if we can guarantee that 70 or 80 percent. So we're kind of in that weird quandary where you're right, the top teams in the country want to play us because we're going to help their overall RPI. Um, and then the, kind of the schools that are around us would like to play us because you know, it's going to be a 50-50 great competitive game of teams of similar uh, like and, and experience. And so, you know, we're trying to find our sweet spot in this balanced schedule, and it's proving to be fairly difficult, but I, I think we're getting very close on it. Take me through uh, a typical phone call with an athletic director. Uh, well, the five minutes of pleasantries, <laughs> uh, you know, and then the five minutes of catching up and uh, and then one AD is going to say, all right, well, this is why I'm calling you, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And, uh, and then you, you just have an honest conversation and, and you say, hey, look, you know, we're, uh, you know, like for next year, you know, Oakland, we're, we're sitting at this place, you know, we're projecting to be X. Um, you know, these are the seniors on the team. This is a style we play. This is our crowd. These are our opportunities. Here are our dates. What do you think? Um, and I think you bring up a great point. You're saying, does it start at the AD level? Sometimes it doesn't. I mean, there's a lot of programs that operate where the coach kind of controls the non-conference scheduling. And by that, I mean, is the one who's on the front line, uh, who's going out and making those um, relationships and, and, and charting the course. And I think it needs to be more collaborative. Mm -hmm. I think we have a great relationship here with Coach Campy and myself. And I, I think, you know, we've talked a lot about what ends we want to accomplish and working together. I think with all of our different resources, we're able to, to try and do that. But, you know, if you leave it in isolation or in a silo and say, hey, coach, go get me a non-conference schedule, it may not match what you're trying to do from an overall programmatic or department standpoint. And vice versa, if you're doing things from a department standpoint, it may not match exactly what the coach would like to see. You know, and some of the other hidden issues on this are, you know, the fans think it's, you know, regional rivalries, regional rivalries. If we get regional rivalries, the, the, form, the, the fact here at Oakland, uh, from what I can tell you, is that you know, playing what quote-unquote would be regional rivalries in our non-conference, there's no uptick in our attendance, right? So you know, on a macro level, as the director of athletics, I have to analyze the facts, not opinions. And when you analyze the facts, you know, it may be nice from a, a, a travel standpoint, and especially if it's a home-and-home and, home and we're returning or we're starting on the road. You know, there is a nice cost savings, and maybe it's, a, it's an easy trip for our student-athletes. But in terms of the revenue side, you know, there's no real bump for playing some of the, what you would think would be regional rivals that would produce a ticket gate for us. 
So that's a factor to consider. Mm -hmm. The other factors to consider in the non-conference schedule is, you know, how do you space these games out? You know, it, it's very difficult. I mean, some of the fans say, well, you have to play more December games. Well, maybe, maybe not. I mean, December's when we are technically off. So if you're going to be on the road and not impact the academic schedule, that's the time you really should be playing your away games. You know, the times to play the home games are in November, and then some of the fans say, well, you know, I'm not going to come out because it's Thanksgiving. But in reality, that's when our kids are here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the general Oakland students. So, you know, you're always playing this game of competing interests. Um, and then, you, you know, the, the facility may be offline. There may be university events. We had, you know, a, a commencement, or mm -hmm. we have other activities, uh, outside groups that rent our facilities. You have the women's game. You have the volleyball, you know, we're playing all three in one facility. Some other uh, universities are playing, you know, basketball is one facility, volleyball in another facility, or volleyball and women's basketball in one facility, and men's basketball in another facility. We have all three playing in one facility. So how does that impact? You know, the volleyball needs, the women's basketball needs, the university needs, the community needs. And so you start Xing these dates off the schedule with all the other considerations we talked about. It's, that's why you say it's a very difficult yeah. Uh, process. Well, it seems pretty easy to me now that you've explained it all. So, <laughs> um, Jeff, we really appreciate you going through that process. We did want to get this out there and, and just kind of show our fans the, the daily rigors of putting a non-conference. Is there any games you can share with the fans right now that are locked in? Uh, we, we have the Michigan State game at mm -hmm. the Palace. Uh, we have, the, obviously, the conference slate of games um, that are going to be here. Um, Maybe one more? <laughs> <laughs> we, we signed a, uh, non, uh, an exempt tournament uh, where we're going to play, uh, I think, at UTEP and at Southern Illinois. Uh, and then the two neutral site games um, in Texas, uh, Corpus Christi. I know that we signed that deal so I can you know, say that, right. that we're going to play there. But some of the other ones are still kind of quote still unquote in the hopper. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks so much for catching up. That does it for us in this edition of Grizzly Bites. Have a great day.